It is crunch time at the Norway Chess Classic. Fabiano Caruana is in first place, but he has some great players on his heels. Hikaru Nakamura is in second place. Wesley So isn't too far behind. And that's who his opponent is in this, the next to last round game. Wesley So. Fabiano Caruana has white. Wesley So has black. And this is really an important game for first place for the entire tournament. Let's jump right in. Caruana with white begins with d4. Uh, Wesley So said knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, and d5. And we have a traditional queen's gambit declined on the board. And Caruana exchanges and plays the exchange variation of the queen's gambit declined, where you have this traditional Carlsbad structure on the board. White has a half open c file, black a half open e file. Bishop to g5, getting the bishop outside of the pawn chain before you play e3. You don't want to block it inside of the pawn chain. c6, strengthening d5. Queen to c2. What Caruana is doing is controlling the f5 square, so the bishop at c8 cannot develop to that square. Black would love to play, play the bishop. Place the bishop on f5. h6, bishop h4, bishop e7, e3 castles, and bishop to d3, rook to e8. Now, it's decision time. Where is Caruana going to develop this g1 knight? Well, he chooses to develop it on f3. And usually when you play knight to f3, you're aiming for a minority attack with, by advancing these queenside pawns and creating a weakness, perhaps on c6 and on the c5 square in black's position. Uh, the other option, excuse me, is knight g to e2, where the idea is to play f3 and e4. But instead, Caruana plays knight to f3. It looks like he's going to go for the minority attack. Let's see how this develops. It's very interesting. Knight b to d7, castles, and knight to e4. Wesley So is looking for an exchange of pieces, but also to create a strong point on this e4 square. If he gets a knight or a pawn on the e4 square, black can actually get some very nice attacks on the king side if white is not careful. Bishop takes e7, queen to e7, and we can see the potential move order for a black kingside attack. The knight can go to f8, the bishop can go to f5 or g4, the knight jumps into g6, etc. Rook a to e1. Now, this move at first sight does not make a lot of sense. This rook is just moving behind a pawn. I mean, you, wouldn't you want your rook on the half open c file instead or behind the b pawn to advance b4, b5? Well, uh, what Caruana is doing is he's going back to that other strategy of playing f3, e4, but He's going to move the knight on f3 out of the way and then play f3, e4, at which point the rook on e1 will be perfectly placed. That's his idea. The knight goes to f6, knight to e5, clearing the way for the f3, e4 idea. Bishop to f5, strengthening the e4 square. f3, knight c3, and you don't want to take on f5 because a knight to a2, winning a pawn. So pawn takes c3, bishop d3, knight takes d3. And in this particular structure with pawns on c3, d4, e3, and f3, this shows up in different lines, the Nimzo Indian. The move e3, e4 is the entire strategy for white. I mean, basically, the entire idea is built around this. White wants to play it, black wants to stop it, and the course of the play is built around control of the e4 square. The queen moves to d6, moving out of the way of the rook. Rook to e2, and this is actually the novelty of the game, but both sides are beginning to orient their pieces around the e4 square. Rook to e7, begin, he's going to double on the e file. White does it first, and we can see both sides aiming all of their forces at e4. And right now, black has e4 under control. White cannot play it. So uh, Caruana decides to play c4 and attack the center in this way. Um, computers recommend dc4 for black. After queen c4, knight to d5, you can see black is putting a lot of pressure on e3 with the knight and the two rooks. And if white plays e4, which looks like a strong move, knight to b6 hits the queen, and if the queen moves rook to d8, and all of a sudden this pawn on d4 is very sensitive, very vulnerable for white, and black would be doing well. Uh, but instead, Wesley So plays b6 to help control this c5 square. Uh, but Caruana just jumps right ahead and plays c5. He doesn't want to take the pawn on c5. Because if he plays bc5, knight takes c5, this structure with pawns on a7, c6, and d5, that's exactly the structure white wants when they play the minority attack. You get a weakness on c6, a strong square for a knight on c5. You don't want to allow that to happen. So 
Wesley so instead plays queen to c7 to prevent that damage to his structure. a4 continuing to gain space on the queen side, rook to e6, queen to c3. So Wesley so has to ask himself a question, which I believe he did at this moment in the game. What side of the board am I going to play on? Caruana clearly has an advantage on the queen side with his extra space and potential weaknesses to attack. The center, central uh, elements seem to be at a, a static state where both sides are kind of they're kind of neutral. So Wesley so decides to gain some advantage on the king side, and he plays g5, gaining space, potentially opening lines against White's king. The knight goes to b4, aiming at c6, maybe even a6. Rook to c8 to defend the c6 pawn. Rook to c1 to attack it, of course, after an exchange on b6. Queen to e7 puts more pressure on e3. Queen to d2. Knight to d7, attacking the c5 pawn. And now pawn takes pawn. Knight takes b6. So instead of taking with the pawn, he allows the same damage to his pawn structure that we were just talking about, except he's saying my knight can jump into c4, and that compensates for any pawn structure damage that might have occurred. But here, Caruana is able to achieve the goal that he has wanted to achieve. And this takes some tactical vision on his part to see. This is not easy to see. And he goes ahead and plays e4. Now, this looks like it's a mistake. I mean, there are two white pieces defending e4, but three black pieces attacking it. I mean, this looks like it loses a pawn, right? So if d e4, and in this case of f e4, rook e4, Black just grabs that pawn and is doing great. Uh, but as it turns out, after de4, white has a very powerful move. The best move for black here, by the way, is a5, and we'll see why here in a second. After de4, white plays a5 first, and this is a devastating move. The reason is he's kicking this knight away from its control of d5, and once that square is, is relieved of black's control, uh, then white has a very nice position. Black cannot play knight to d5 because knight takes knight and there's a pin down the c file if the pawn were to take the knight, then rook takes c8 check and white would win. And if instead he were to play a move like knight to d7, the move d5 is still very strong. The knight aims at c6, the pawn hits the rook, there's still the pin on the c file. Uh, white is completely winning there. So in an attempt to complicate matters, Wesley So plays e3 first attacking the queen. The queen goes to e1, but now he has to do something with his knight. And after knight to d7, d5, again, Caruana is dominating. So Wesley So makes the difficult decision to sacrifice the knight on b6 and try to find play elsewhere. He plays queen to d7, pawn takes knight, pawn takes pawn. Now Fabiano Caruana has won the knight, but Wesley So has two pieces as compensation. Let's see if he can generate anything with those pawns. Two pawns, excuse me, as compensation. Let's see if he can generate anything with those pawns. D5. This exchanges some pieces off of the board, which, of course, helps the side that is up material. Pawn takes. Rook c8 check. Queen c8. Knight takes d5. Caruana is aiming at this e3 pawn. Both the queen, rook, and knight attack it. B5. Knight takes. And essentially, Wesley So's only hope for survival is really in this b-pawn. He has to nurse that pawn slowly up the board while keeping Caruana occupied. That is really his only chance to survive this position. Queen to c5 pins the knight on e3. King to f1, b4, advancing the pawn. Knight goes to d1. Queen to b5, now pinning the rook at e2. Queen to d2, b3, advancing the pawn. The pawn... Pawn is getting closer, only two squares away from queening. King to e1, queen to b6, you can never relax. Wesley So is threatening queen to g1 checkmate right now. Uh, Caruana, of course, sees that and plays rook takes e6. That gives the king a flight square on e2. Uh, but queen to g1 check is played here anyway. King to e2, queen takes g2 check. He blocks with the knight, and now black has to take the rook back after those checks. And uh, Wesley So is attacking the pawn on h2, so h3. This keeps these pawns on f3 and h3 protected for the time being. Queen to g3, queen to d8 check. Now, Caruana gets to do some uh, checking of his own. King to f7, queen to d7 check, king to f8. And he grabs the e6 pawn, and he's aiming at the pawn on b3. And Wesley So cannot advance that pawn 
because then queen to f6 check is a double attack when the king moves queen takes b2 so wesley so plays queen to b8 the strongest square for the queen placing it behind the pawn supporting its advance to b2 and b1 queen to f6 check king g8 and after a series of checks Tarawana wins the h pawn after a series of further checks he, the king can't go to the back rank as you can see because the queen would check at h8 and win black's queen so he's able to use these checks to push the king where he wants it to go and now Tarawana takes the g5 pawn with check it's not looking good for wesley so here king e6 queen g6 and knight to d3 check and in this position wesley so resigned the reason being if if king to b6 then queen to b4 check one of many moves, but that would force the queens off the board and lead to an easily winning endgame. And if instead the other option for black, king to d6, then queen to e5 check, just wins the queen outright. This victory by Fabiano Caruana sets up a showdown with Hikaru Nakamura. Fabiano is way ahead, except if Hikaru actually beats him in the head to head in the main game, Hikaru would actually win the entire tournament. It's going to be exciting. Thank you for joining us at Chess Dog. See you again soon. Bye.